the nature of translation and its parameters have been debated since long. As all of you know, Dryden was the first in English, the major poet playwright of the 17th century or the restoration period, to take up this work seriously and discuss it because he was a great translator of Homer and Virgil. And uh, Dryden argued for total freedom on the part of the translator to follow the text or to mutilate the text or to recreate the text. The translator is greater than the author to do whatever he wants with a particular work. That was his argument. And there were many who opposed him. And one of them, I'm sure you know, was uh, Alexander F. Teitler, who did not at all agree with Dryden and wrote a very powerful book called Articles on Principles of Translation in 1791. And it was considerably popular throughout the 18th century. And since Titler, there have been many writers, critics, and poets discussing the nature of translation, the problems of a translator, and all that. However, what we have to notice is it, they did not have to face the kind of problems that the 20th century or the 19th century translators faced and are facing. Because till the 19th century, there was no worldwide phenomenon called colonialism. And colonialism completely changed the arena as well as the functions of what is called translation. Let us see what happened. Theoretically, if we draw a line of the process of translation, we find at one end of that line the text, the text to be translated. And at the other end, we find the implied reader who is supposed to read the translated text. And theoretically speaking again, 